today we are going to see annotations in a core java so before going to see the complete information about annotations first we need to understand what is annotation what is the requirement to go for annotations annotation is a new feature in java provided by jdk 5.0 version annotations can be used to describe metadata in java programs annotation is a new feature provided by java programming language it can be used to provide some metadata in java programs metadata in the sense data about the data especially in java programming data about our coding part is called as metadata to describe some information about our coding part we are going to use annotations immediately one question will be raised here what is that question now in java to describe metadata already we have comments then what is the requirement to go for annotations answer for this is very simple if you want to understand answer for this one Uh, we need to see what exactly the compilation structure we need to identify that so for that i will give some clarity try to observe this one for example i have taken a java file this is a dot java file i want to compile it this is compilation when i compile this dot java file automatically we are able to get dot class file generating number of dot class files is completely depending on how many classes how many abstract classes how many interfaces how many enums and how many inner classes which we have written in our java file for each and every class for each and every abstract class for each and every interface for each and every enum for each and every inner class a separate dot class file will be created assume it this is main class dot class file when we are getting this dot class file we want to execute it now this is which one clearly execution this is one point when we execute this dot class file automatically we are able to get some output here clearly now in this scenario what is compilation we need to understand here the compilation is nothing but in general compilation it is a work from four missions clearly what are the four missions here the first one would be pre processor this is one mission after this mission next one will be compiler this is another one after this compiler assembler this is another one after this assembler loader link editor this is last one overall these missions work is nothing but which one you know is a compilation compilation is not like a single mission work compilation is a work from four missions of course in a java compilation process pre processor is not existed in a java compilation work now pre processor is not available only compiler assembler loader link editor why pre processor is not available in a java compilation now in a java programming language hash include statements are not available why hash include statements are not available in a java predefined library is provided in the form of packages not in the form of header files if header files are existed we need to use hash include statement if hash include statements are available we must require pre processor but here complete predefined library in java is provided in the form of packages to include packages we are going to use import statements to recognize import statements compiler is sufficient 
so not required to use preprocessor but in general in all the programming languages compilation including preprocessor good then after that if you see this compiler part now here compiler is existed with the six number of phases clearly what are the six number of phases here now the first one is lexical analysis phase this is one part next one after this syntax analysis part syntax analysis phase syntax analysis phase then after this syntax analysis phase semantic analysis phase semantic analysis phase we can understand now after this intermediate code generation intermediate code generation this is another one after this intermediate code generation code optimization after this code optimization next one will be code generation this is code generation now here these six number of phases are coming under compilation part understand it clearly first of all dot java file have taken dot java file is compiled then dot class files we are getting if we execute dot class files we are able to get some output if we come for this compilation part four phases are available pre processor compiler assembler loader link editor pre processor is not available in java we understood clearly why it is not available compiler if we take now six number of phases we are able to see lexical analysis phase syntax analysis phase semantic analysis phase intermediate code generation code optimization and code generation now to understand our question what is the requirement to go for annotations over comments to understand this one only we require the functionality of the lexical analysis phase just we need to understand what exactly the functionality of lexical analysis phase then we will see what exactly the requirement to go for annotations over comments point is very clear try to understand it now the basic functionality of lexical analysis phase is only two functions two actions are performed by lexical analysis phase point number 1 whatever the source program we are given for compilation that will be an input to compiler then that will be an input to lexical analysis phase lexical analysis phase will take the complete source program the complete source program will be stored in the form of a buffer lexical analysis phase will take the complete source program that source pro that source program will be stored in the form of a buffer this process is called as buffering that means the process of storing the complete source program in the form of a buffer is called as which one buffering after completion of this buffering lexical analysis phase has to read complete program from buffer and it has to divide that program into number of pieces where each and every piece is called as a token simple point lexical analysis space will buffer the complete source program after buffering the lexical analysis space will perform tokenization over the respective program that means dividing our source program into number of tokens and generating stream of tokens as an input as an output from lexical analysis space that will be given as an input to syntax analysis phase now so here syntax analysis phase semantic analysis phase intermediate code generation code optimization and code generation phases they will perform their own actions finally some kind of dot class file will be generated here now it's okay so the basic functionality of lexical analysis phase is buffering and tokenization whenever lexical analysis phase is performing tokenization whatever the metadata we specified by using comments in our source program if we specify 
some description by using commas the lexical analysis first will remove all the commas from the source program as part of this compilation itself lexical analysis phase will remove the complete source program for complete commented information metadata which was specified along with the comments would be removed from our source program there that is a functionality of lexical analysis phase now so if you open the dot class file we may not see the metadata which we specified along with our comments in general in programming languages i'm telling but my requirement is different now I want to provide some description in my program. It is not technical; just it is a description about my program. But I want to bring the description up to source code and up to dot class file and up to runtime of my application there now. I want to bring my uh, like uh, metadata. I want to bring my source code, my not source code. I want to bring my description up to dot Java file, up to dot class file, and up to runtime of my application there. So, what is the requirement to bring our metadata up to runtime of my application to simplify my debugging process or to simplify my testing procedure? There, now I want to debug on the basis of my metadata. I want to test my application on the basis of my metadata. For simplification of this debugging and the testing processes, now we need to bring metadata up to runtime of my application. There, now. to bring metadata up to runtime of our application, comments are not sufficient. in place of comments we must go for annotations as a feature so if we talk the main difference between comments and annotations is comments life is maximum up to source code but annotations life is up to source code up to dot class file and up to runtime of our application because of this reason only we can go for which one there no annotations not only that if we provide description by using comments are unable to access programmatically commented metadata is not possible to access programmatically but i want to access my description programmatically programmatic accessibility is required over my metadata if you want to access metadata programmatically so we are unable to use comments there where we go for which one there no annotations annotations are providing such kind of flexibility for the developers to access metadata even programmatically that's all there is a requirement to go for annotations over comments fine this is one point then one more question will be raised here in this particular context your requirement is only to bring metadata up to runtime of your application or to access the metadata at the runtime of your application before jdk 5.0 version we are able to use xml documents for java programs we are able to use xml documents to bring metadata up to runtime of our application and as well as to access that metadata programmatically but still what is the requirement to go for annotations that right, if we come for this particular point now answers are very clear for example if we provide metadata by using xml document where we are able to get some drawbacks what are the drawbacks the point number 1 being the java developer first of all must to know about xml technology first we have to learn a xml technology separately a scripting language we need to know that is one point next point if we provide our metadata along with any particular like xml document now every time we have to check whether xml documents are located properly or not that means whether xml documents are saved properly or not point we need to understand not only that every time we have to check whether xml documents are formatted properly or not not only that every time we have to check whether we are using right parsing mechanism or not to read the data from the xml file so first we need to know about xml technology second we need to check whether xml documents are located properly or not saved properly or not next we have to check whether xml Sir, formatted properly or not? Here, formation in the sense, all the attributes and all the tags are there is proper or not? So they are well formed to document, well formed format document or not? That everything we have to check. Along with that, every time we need to check whether we are using right parsing mechanism or not to read the data from XML documents. So we need to monitor all these things if we are using XML documents to provide 
the data at our runtime of our application there. So to overcome all these problems, we need to go for annotations provided by regarding this JDK 5.0 version. See, because of this reason only, in all Java JDE technologies, we are able to utilize annotations as a replacement for XML documents. As a replacement for XML documents, we are able to use annotations in Java JDE applications, especially JDE applications there. One simple example I am telling you, if you take any servlet application, then we must require to provide web.xml file if you want to execute any servlet. But by the introduction of these annotations, we can remove web.xml file from our web applications there now. See, we are able to see some difference about this one. What exactly the replacement for this is a web.xml file with annotations there, just we are going to identify it now. Now see this one. For example, if you want to execute any servlet, right, if you want to, if you want to execute any servlet, we need to provide uh, some web.xml file tags. What are the various tags here we need to use now? First one will be web app tag we need to use. Inside this web app tag, we need to provide servlet to tag. Inside this servlet to tag, we need to provide servlet to name tag. This will be logical name of the servlet. Let's say for example, login servlet. Slash servlet to tag. Servlet to name tag. Next one, servlet to class tag, we need to provide. Servlet to class. Here we need to provide fully qualified name of the servlet to class com dot durgasoft dot login servlet I want to provide fully qualified name of the servlet to class slash servlet to class then we need to close the servlet to tag slash servlet next we have to go for servlet to mapping tag insert the servlet to mapping tag we have to provide servlet to name tag. Servlet name tag, what exactly the name we provided under this servlet tag? Same name here we have to provide. Servlet to name. Next one, we need to provide URL pattern tag. We can declare any number of URL patterns for a single servlet. Now just I want to go for which one here? Login, slash login is URL pattern. Then here we need to provide URL pattern tag. Then after this, here we need to go for servlet to mapping tag. Then after this servlet mapping tag, here we need to provide web app tag. That's all. If you want to run any servlet at our server now, we must take a web.xml file. In web.xml file, we must provide these main number of tags. Mainly, nearly 10 number of tags here we need to provide. But in place of web.xml file, we are able to use annotations after introduction of the annotations inside the Java. What exactly the equivalent annotation we are going to use for this entire web.xml file, it would be very simple. Now try to observe this one. Only one annotation at the edge, web servlet of slash login. Now here we can write public class login servlet. Extends HTTP servlet and some implementation we can provide. Just only this annotation here we need to provide. This annotation is equivalent to this complete web.xml file. So we can remove this complete web.xml file. We can remove this nearly 10 lines of XML code just by using simply one annotation here. This is the power of the annotations in web applications now. Almost all, 10 lines of XML code is equivalent to one line of Java annotation there. This is the power of the annotations. Because of this reason only, in all the Java JDB technologies, in Java JDB applications, in place of XML documents, we are able to use annotations there clearly. This is a requirement to go for annotations there. 
Fine. After understanding what is the requirement to go for annotations, we need to see which technologies are using XML files, which technologies are using annotations effectively. From which technologies onwards annotations are available in a Java J2E. But before moving for that comparison, first we need to understand why we are coming for annotations over comments, why we are coming for annotations over XML documents. If you provide metadata by using comments, that metadata is available up to .java file. To bring metadata up to runtime of our application and to access the metadata programmatically where we must go for annotations over XML, over comments. Next question, why we are coming for annotations over XML documents? If we are using XML documents to provide metadata at runtime of our applications, we must know XML technology explicitly. We must check every time whether XML files are saved properly or not. We must check every time whether XML, pro XML documents are, are like uh, formatted properly or not. We must check whether we are using right parsing mechanism or not to read the data from the respective XML documents. So because of this reason only, we need to go for annotations to overcome these problems there now. But if you go for any Java JTV applications, no? Annotations is becoming a very good alternative for XML documents. Simple example if you take, to run a server, we must require web.xml file. Inside web.xml file, we have to provide server to configuration. Nearly 10 lines of XML tags here we are using then. As a replacement for these 10 lines of uh, XML tags now, simply we are going to use one annotation, one simple Java line, that would be which one? At the rate web server slash login, that is sufficient. The complete 10 lines of code is equivalent to a simple, one simple Java annotation there now. This is the power of the annotations in our Java j technologies. Now, we need to understand which technologies are using XML documents and which technologies are using annotations.